Okay, let's see if this works. Coming into the room. There we go, it took a second. So basically, because this has a presence detector uh, down here and also a light sensor and some of the gubbins slapped to the bottom of the TV, this detects when I walk in the room and it'll turn on. I now have a 65 inch Amazon Echo Show. And it's also, you know, a TV. So this is the Amazon Fire TV Omni, a 4K QLED TV, which actually came out late 2022 in the US, but it's just now arriving here in the UK and elsewhere. And essentially it's their latest flagship TV, sitting above the cheaper four and two series. Fast forward two minutes. It works. So I say flagship TV. This obviously isn't going to compete with your three and a half thousand pound or whatever LG G3s or Samsung S95Cs. This is flagship for Amazon and at around 800 pounds, around $750 on Amazon right now. Normally it goes for like a thousand, but it seems to be always on a deal. This is actually more mid upper mid range. We have a 65 inch QLED TV. This has got a full array local dimming backlight. We get HDR 10 plus and Dolby Vision. Uh, of course, we have the presence sensor. It's got Alexa built in and all the good Fire TV stuff. Is this actually worth buying? Is it a good TV? And I guess the last question is why not just, you know, stick a Fire Stick TV into any other TV? Is this really that special? Okay, so right off the bat, this gets points for just how easy it is to set up. It literally takes a minute maybe to screw in the two feet and having just set up the painfully over-engineered stand on a new Samsung TV that I'm also working on, this is a breeze. The only downside is unlike say TCL's TVs, these feet can't be flipped to face inward and reduce their, well, what would you call it, footprint. So this 65 inch only just fits on my TV stand. Although it does stand tall, so there's plenty of room for a soundbar underneath. Although for starters, the built-in dual 12 watt speakers do a decent job. It's once you're up and running, and it's simply a case of pairing the remote, logging into your Amazon account and installing any updates, this is the Fire OS TV menu, which you'll be familiar with if you've ever used a Fire TV stick or cube from the last couple of years. It's fast, you have all the streaming apps you can shake a stick at, including of course Amazon's own Prime Video, which is front and center. We also have Netflix, Disney, Apple TV, Paramount Plus, along with the usual UK apps like iPlayer, Now TV, and all the other rubbish. Sadly, there's no GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud streaming apps for gaming, although Amazon say their Luna game streaming app will be coming soon. Not that there's an awful lot to play on that. Now you can use this TV as a bit of a hub for all your smart home tech. You can view live feeds of your cameras. Uh, we've also got these widgets on the ambient mode dashboard you can play with, full Alexa integration, of course, as well as Apple AirPlay and Apple HomeKit support. In terms of design, I think it's a pretty good looking TV. It doesn't look or feel cheap by any stretch. The bezels are nice and thin, although that is somewhat aided by the slight bevel to the edges, giving the illusion they're thinner than they really are. But then we do have this fairly chunky chin at the bottom, as well as this extra sensor box, which has a couple of LEDs. You've got the presence detector, the light sensor, so it can detect the ambient lighting around you and adjust the screen brightness if you want. The Omni also comes with this bundle, the Amazon Fire Alexa TV remote, which is fine. I like this a lot, actually. It's really nice and slim. You've got some shortcuts to Netflix, Prime Video, Disney, and uh, Freeview Play here in the UK. And also a button up here to activate the voice assistant. I'm trying to reduce the number of times I say the A word so it stops triggering it for you. But with the Omni TVs, you don't have to press this because it has far field mics built in, which as I say, you can disable if you want. So you can just bark orders at the TV and you don't have to press this. However, it seems a bit stingy that they couldn't include the pro version of this remote, which costs like 30 pounds to buy, uh, which has a few more controls, backlighting, and also a remote control finder if you lose this down the back of your sofa. Round the back, we have three HDMI 2 ports and one 2.1, which does also support eARC. So this is where you'll want to plug in your soundbar or speakers. At least one more 2.1 port would have been nice to see, especially if you have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. But then again, since this TV is only 60 Hertz, there's no higher 120 Hertz refresh rate, a regular HDMI 2 port is fine for your consoles. There's no bandwidth issue. 
I wish I could talk more about gaming, but there just isn't really much to say about this. It does support ALLM or auto low latency mode, so we'll switch to game mode uh, and turn off all the background processing, giving you the fastest response time. Although at around 15 milliseconds, it's fairly mediocre. There's also a pretty basic 48 to 60 hertz variable refresh, no 120 hertz of course, no G-Sync, no FreeSync. It's fine, it'll do the job, but it's nothing special for gaming. But of course, the most important thing with any TV is the picture quality. And before we dive in, the first thing I've noticed actually using this is the menus don't look 4K. My eyesight isn't great, but it kind of looks like just basic 720p maybe. Definitely would have been nice if this menu was a bit sharper. So these Omni TVs are 4K, HDR, and also we get full array local dimming with quantum dots on a VA panel. With one exception, the smallest 43 inch version of this has a direct backlight LED as opposed to full array local dimming FALD. So the 43 inch isn't gonna look quite as nice as this. And the benefit of having dimming zones, in the case of the 65 inch, we have 80 of them. On the bigger 75 inch in the US, you get 90. The more dimming zones you have, the more precise the lighting. So when you have a light in a dark area, you're gonna get less blooming and less haloing. Obviously, it's not gonna match the perfect contrast uh, that you get with an OLED where each pixel or can turn itself on and off, but the more dimming zones you have, the more precise the lighting for each area on the screen. Now the Q in QLED refers to the quantum dot layer, which is supposed to help increase brightness and color vibrancy. I measured a full screen brightness in SDR at around 300 nits and in HDR around 380 to 400 nits, which actually is pretty decent for full screen brightness. But then in terms of brightness on a 9% window, which is often how we test, brightness on TVs like this. In HDR, we're looking at uh, it's around 500 nits of brightness. It's a little bit under, which is not too bad, but you're not gonna get a particularly impressive HDR experience from this. Now, you can also see the reflections. Hi. Obviously all TVs have reflections, higher end models do have better anti-reflective coatings, and this isn't the worst I've seen. Obviously with lighter backgrounds, those reflections aren't as big of a deal. And it does have a bit of an anti-reflective coating, which kind of helps, but it also gives it a bit of a kind of washed out, almost dirty look to it. I'm not sure how well that comes across on camera. And as for viewing angles, if I come around over here, there's a little bit of brightness drop off. Not too bad if I come right up close to the side. At the very fringes, it does drop quite considerably and there's a bit of a sort of color shift, but not too bad at all, actually, for an LED TV like this. I do like the fact that this supports both Dolby Vision IQ and also HDR10+. Most TVs don't get both, although again, the fairly average brightness means the HDR isn't exactly gonna blow you away, but it does still look good. Colors are rich, but not too oversaturated, and if you like to tinker, you do have lots of picture options to play with in the settings menu. So far, so ordinary. So let's talk about this ambient mode and also the presence sensor because that does separate this. You don't get that with regular Fire Stick TVs or pretty much any other TV on the market. So instead of walking in on a 65 inch black void sitting on your TV stand or wall, with this, it detects you and automatically wakes up the TV, showing you either a lovely wallpaper or a selection of widgets with your to-do list, smart home gadgets, your weather, all that good filler stuff. To answer your burning questions, this does use roughly the same amount of power as just watching TV generally, although usually this uh, defaults to a lower brightness setting, so it can save a little bit there. Also, you can make it so pets don't trigger it. You don't want your dog coming in at night and turning it on. And also, as I say, at night, you can simply disable it. So if someone walks through your living room to the kitchen to raid the fridge or whatever, it's not gonna turn on and wake everyone up. And it will also fully turn off after five minutes when it doesn't detect you anymore. I've also just noticed that this must be the light sensor because if you put your finger over it, it dims the screen. So even if you have auto brightness turned off for the regular TV outside of ambient mode, which I do, the ambient mode will still get brighter or dimmer based on the, well, ambient light around you. But what I do like right now is having Alexa built in. It is genuinely useful to fast forward, rewind, jump to a specific time, ask to watch a certain show or movie or switch inputs. The tech chap on YouTube. 
so let's wrap this up. And starting with the good stuff, I like the design. I think it's really easy to set up. I do like being able to walk in and it wakes up into ambient mode, perhaps not an essential feature that will make you rush out and buy it, but it is quite cool. Picture quality is pretty good for the price and particularly in HDR, while it's not the brightest TV in the world by any stretch, it does pop and it looks quite nice. And I do like the fact we have all major HDR formats. And we do have that one HDMI 2.1 with eARC, more would have been nice, but that will do. Uh, and also I really do like the Fire TV OS software. It's fast, although not as fast as the Fire Stick TV Max that must have a beefier processor inside. And also we get Wi-Fi 6 with that. This is the Wi-Fi 5. Again, for the price of like 60 pounds for that stick, I don't know why we wouldn't have those features in this. Downsides, well, it is only 60 hertz and there aren't a ton of gaming features, so it's not particularly special for gaming. I also find the UI and the menus a little bit blurry, even though this is a 4K TV, it doesn't seem to upscale uh, that particularly well. And actually speaking of upscaling, HD to 4K is pretty good. Obviously that's all going on in the background. Although I did actually find older standard definition content actually looked pretty ropey on this. The brightness is also pretty average. Uh, I also think the 43 inch version is too expensive and it lacks that full array look of dimming backlight, so the quality is not quite as good either. And as I say, it also feels like they've cheaped out a little bit by not bundling the Pro Remote, and also it's not as fast and we don't have Wi-Fi 6 like you get on the Max TV stick. And the other problem is that you can get similarly specced TVs from the likes of Hisense and TCL for less money, particularly on the smaller models, and you can just stick a Fire Stick TV 4K or the Max one, which is actually better than this, in that, and you'd save some money. The downside, of course, is you may not have built into those TVs and also we haven't got the presence sensor but I just don't know if that is enough of a feature to buy this over some of the cheaper alternatives. But still, if you do buy yourself one of these, and I would encourage you to make sure it's on a sale before you buy it, you're not going to be disappointed. It's a good TV with some fun extras, but nothing that special. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy one of these Omni TVs? Let me know what you make of it in the comments below. I'll also leave a link for this in the description. And if you've got any questions, well, share them below as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to see more from me and more TV videos like this, a like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.